We're gonna soup it all up. We're gonna radius the side plate, radius the shelf, recarve the riser, give it a facelift, tiller, tune it, straighten it, and see what we got. But first thing, let's shoot it. All right, so this bow is 43 pounds. I don't have a knocking point on it yet, but we really don't need one for uh, just testing it. Now it gets really stiff. It probably starts stacking about 25 inches. Hey, not bad. Put my bow arm up a little bit, but on that one. I imagine if I made mine 48 inches, a lot of my limb profiles would stack also. This is just a short, short bow, but I'll get to here. It's stacking right there, pretty heavy. Bullseye. Not a bad little bow. Let's get it unstrung and do some magic. First things first, we're gonna strip off the stuff we don't want on here. If you think weather stripping is an Olympic sport, you might be a redneck. But a lot of these old stabilizer bushings are just glue in. Look at that. That thing is just barely on. What kind of medallion? Oh, it's got a little poker. Okay, we are stripped. Now we're gonna follow the traditional steps. That way we don't make mistakes. And the first step we're gonna do is we are going to fix the tips. pretty and real pretty it's almost a center shot bow but with the uh, the side plate rest on there it actually pushes it out to where it is it is not a center cut bow so I'm gonna take about a sixteenth off and move it over so that when you put your 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 side plate material on there it still is a center shot I'm gonna radius it back here radius it here and I'm also gonna radius this shelf because it's very flat there's no high point we don't have just a lot of material down here, but we've got enough. We will start by hacksawing the shelf out. You have to set your layout points or it just throws you off. that this bow is cut it's so far forward that you know the radius the high point can be clear into here where a lot of bows it needs to be back here all right that's good I try to keep as much integrity to the original bow your bow company that I can when redoing a bow I mean it stacks but it's really a cool design honestly but that is so much more radius than what it had now I am gonna make this shelf smaller it's just gigantic right now Okay, that's good. So we'll move over to the pneumatic sleeve. They do have a little hole dug here. Even after I did the side plate, that hole is still there. So that hole must have been pretty deep. You can see what I'm talking about right there. There's a hole that when they were machining this bow, they just didn't do a great job on. When the paint comes off that easy, it's kind of fun. It just, uh, it's exciting to see what's underneath. I wouldn't say the same for changing diapers. It's not that exciting to see what's underneath. All right, last step on this here station. We're gonna take out this here area right there. Okay, tips and shelf and side plate finish. We've got a beautiful nice radius coming around there. We've got a nice radius here. You look at this, the high point is right above your webbing of your hand. The next step will be to carve the riser. He wants this shallowed out, and I agree with him because this you got a hot spot here and here, and it just cramps your hand in there. So let's go for it. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Okay. I'm going to make a mark here, see my progress. I think I want to take it down to about right there.
That feels pretty good. I bet I took a good three eighths off, if not more. We don't want to go too far because we do have a bushing in here and if we compromise that, we'll call that good. We'll send this up that we did. You can see how I have to do this, and a lot of my refinishes, I've got to do work like this. That is incredibly time consuming and just sucks up my time. So, if you're anywhere under 300 bucks or 400 bucks when you get your bow back, you're still getting a good deal. Because we don't really want to have a square. A square is going to look kind of bad. You're still going to see some of that old finish because I can't get onto it, or I'll take off the white decals. That's how I'm going to do it. So, I'll go ahead and do this one and this one right here, and then we'll check back in. I've already done both, both uh, limbs of the back side. They're ready. As I've been standing here, um, one thing I noticed is, and it could be just the way that this here bow was stored or, or kept, but the finish on here is super hard. Could be, you know, what they were using back that time in the bear factory, or it could be, you know, that it was stored in an attic or somewhere where it just baked the finish on, I don't know. But it's a kind of a big problem and i'll tell you why it's a big problem because he doesn't want any weight reduced on this bow so if i didn't have to worry about that i would just take it to my power sanders my pneumatics and we'd have that finish off in a couple minutes but because we can't take weight off of it we can't do that so we have to carefully take it off with hand sandpaper right around this here decal you've got this sort of little cloudy that's i know that's the bow finish Underneath that, you've got another cloud. And I know from experience that in order to make it perfect, both of these clouds ideally should come off. However, to take this one off, I don't know what this is. I don't know if this is the base layer of the finish, maybe like a gloss coat to make it harder, or if it's some sort of finish that is on the old glass. This intermediary cloud here that comes off pretty easy. Obviously, I can't get much closer than that because there's a decal there, but that comes off pretty easy. This one comes off really hard. I'm definitely not gonna get this cloud off here, but I'm gonna at least get a little bit more of this, this deep cloud off. It'd have to look for it to see it once it's finished. So I'm done with that one, and now I'll, now I'll do this side. So I'm gonna do this overlay now. If this yellow wasn't on there, I wouldn't have to clean that up, but we cannot leave that yellow on there. That is beautiful, brilliant white again. Now this is where you have to be real careful, because right where there's a hole, there's not much glass, you can go through that glass so quick. Okay, now, here's what I want to show you. Look how poorly these are shaped. So they came in here, here, and then it's just straight across. That's not great craftsmanship. You go further up, this is straight too, but look at this one, it's on an angle. We can't leave that like that. I would get in so much trouble from Josh if I left that like that. Okay, that looks really good. See how this whistles. I'm deaf in my left ear right now. So we've got the overlays. There's no overlays on the belly. Let's clean up the grip, get that done real quick. I'm gonna put a chamfer on that because I'm gonna reduce the size of this just a little bit. Not that much, because we do need that protection for your hand. This is kind of one of my favorite processes. My favorite things to do is putting this camper on. It's just so simple. It just kind of, it's relaxing and it just goes on there. And, oh, a third or fourth reason I do this. Whenever you got the bow all finished sanded, ready to go to the spray booth, you take a little bit of sandpaper and hit these sharp edges. And then it's really, really hard to chip this from wear and tear, you, you drop your bow or lay it down. If this all comes to one point and it can check or crack, I'm talking a lot right now. Is that okay? Yeah, I'll just edit it out. Okay, this is just to kind of shape it. I use this here paper sort of as a mini planer, hand planer. Okay, I'm happy with that. Stuff that is scratches doesn't look like it and stuff that isn't scratches looks like it.
other riser wood I'd have been done long ago with this step. But I just don't trust this maple. I don't want to get it in the spray booth and then there's a scratch. Now we'll run the random orbit on this bad boy. And then we'll, we'll fill these, which will be fun. I, I enjoy doing that. But first we have to get a good surface here. Ooh, look at that. Ah, there's some glue voids that were not fixed when the original production of this bow. We cannot have that. Okay, I'm gonna use that dust for buildup. All right, here we go. There we go. All right, now we quickly sand that and mix up some slurry. Okay, now we go ahead and put some more in. Okay, as soon as it gets light colored, we go again. Okay, those are filled perfectly. You all right? Yeah, I, I got a pinched nerve that's been bothering me for the last three weeks, and it's really bad right now. Actually, I'm gonna, let me, let me get a big drink of water. That'll help. Just right along there. Fill it up. Oh, we got it all right. It's gonna be pretty. Switch over to 220. I'm just paranoid about this maple. I just always think there's gonna be scratches whenever I spray it. Look at that, see that's what I'm talking about. See that? Those are big old deep scratches. You know how much I sanded on that already? I'm gonna random orbit that, yeah. Just always finding stuff, man. Okay. It looks really, 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 plus two more really is good. How much weight do you think it drops? I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess that it is sitting between 41 and 40 pounds. It's nearly a perfect refinish job. If I didn't have to go around those decals, it would be a perfect refinish job. Look how bright white those are. Perfectly tillered. Oh, 40 pounds. I was real careful, there's, there's no way you could have not taken off that amount of weight. There's just no way. Nice and straight. Nice and straight. So there's paint on that bad boy. But if I polish it, what color is it underneath? We're going to find out. That'll work. Donk. To the bottom of that first ring is what we have to polish to. See, I could just get a bolt. This is the part of reworks that costs the shop so much money because nothing ever goes according to plan when you're working on old bows. You're always running into stuff that's like, man, they're very rewarding and fulfilling to do, but they also are expensive and time consuming. Try this. Look at that beautiful shiny beast. Question is, Joshua, how are we going to keep that thing in there? Poxy might work. That was close. We're going to move that glue up onto the sides. I knew it would do that. All that good? There we go. Ow! That's hot. You know, let's get a new piece of steel wool. That is some weak metal. Different plan now. Wow. We inset it now. 
we just need this video to get a hundred thousand views and then it, it won't matter that we are losing our shirt on this deal right right <laughs> oh right, that's good let's take it to the buffer see what we can do We're actually buffing up pretty nice I'm getting more confident by putting my fingers right up against it and that's usually when you lose one that's beautiful look at that so now we inlay it because we broke off the stem I wonder if I could like say that you broke it off 922 so it's a little over 7 8 before I cut that hole is there any other way I could flatten this thing out, Josh. But if I do that, that'll increase, increase the diameter of it. I already know that the, the closest size I have to is a 7 8 Forstner bit. If I flatten it out, it could gain a 30 second. You know what I'm saying, dog? Yeah. Uh, well, with how easy that broke off the back, are you concerned about breaking it? Yeah, it might crack if I flattened it. If I flatten it, it'll make full contact with the glue. Let's find this uh, 7 8 here. You know, I could modify a paddle bit yeah. and it would go, it would make a perfect hole. How's your uh, bit rack coming along? Oh, it's nice. And you see, this is my bit rack and it's really nice. Everything is all organized by size from smallest to biggest. The smallest is at the bottom, and the I biggest. the one you needed is at the bottom. Well, usually, yeah, thirteen, sixteen, inch and an eight, eleven sixteenths. You know what I always say is, if you get, if you grab the one that you need first, you don't have to look near as long. We're on a wild adventure today. Dude, that's wrong. Those were on the bottom. See, I should be smallest to biggest. That's not right. That's a 7 8, but that's been used on FR4. That thing's dull. And that is a 7 8, and that is a sharp, relatively sharp. We'll set that one here. I don't think I even have a 7 8 paddle bit. Let me look one more place quick. One inch. What's this? Oh. oh, 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 oh. oh. Who's your dad? Yeah, I found it, all right. That is not 7 8. That'll come right through. That is already shaped. You could literally almost make the hole you needed, and the center would be higher. Do we try it? Well, that's way too big. Let's try a Forstner. That's dead on 7 8. All right, you ready to be terrified? Because I don't have a pilot hole, I think I should start it and then drop it in. I normally don't do it that way. You know what? Don't be a fool, Shane. Yeah, be a fool. No, don't be a fool. Now I have a guide, so I will release these and I'll sink this down in here and pray that it doesn't pop out of there. Oh, I can't take my hand off that. That should work. This bow has been kind of an adventure, huh? So I've got to take off almost a full 30 second which will be fine. I should still have a little bit of the rim left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight gets us all the way around. So we got to go in multiples of eight. And that keeps us round. Man. 
Oh yeah, it moved. What's going on? I think that's a plastic. I think that thing is plastic. That's why it broke off so easy. That's that's a plastic or something. And it's just got a... Uh, yeah, that's exactly what it is, because look. That's just got a veneer of, of some sort of copper. That's pretty stinking cheap. I would have expected better than that from an old bear bow. I feel something really bad happening, Joshua. What do I feel? Good thing we didn't try to flatten it. Oh, it would have just it would have just shattered. It's pretty uh disappointing that they would use plastic for their medallion. That is so close. Just for the record, everyone, Great Plains medallions are solid metal all the way through. That would go in. I'm gonna go just a little more. We don't wanna force anything. I want a tight fit though, but if I go too tight, it's gonna delaminate. We're ready to glue it in. But before I do that, I kind of rolled that edge up because that's a veneer on plastic. And I'm gonna push this down around the edge. Like that. Are you napping a plastic coin? I'm down? napping a plastic medallion. I'm flint napping a plastic medallion. The Indians they had skills, but could they nap a plastic medallion? Still a pretty tight fit, but I, I want it to be pretty tight because I don't trust just the glue. I want a little bit of a compression fit. Now we're gonna square this up. That looks good. Now what I'm gonna do is very gently take my napping tool. Here it is, it's finished. I'm, I'm really happy with it, it's, it turned out beautiful. I made it center shot, I radiused the, the shelf, I radiused the side plate, I recarved the grip, I polished up the stabilizer bushing and put that in there, cleaned it all up, managed to leave the decals on. That was a big job in itself. Of course, we found out that this medallion is plastic, which I, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know Bear Archery had plastic medallions. A lot bigger job than I thought it would be, to be honest with you, but uh, it, it turned out very beautiful. I'm real happy with it, and it's a, it's a sweet little bow now. So I hope uh, he's happy with it, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.